Hello, and welcome to part two of my video on making a Milky Way panoramic image using a star tracker. In part one, I was up in Sedona, Arizona, and I took a series of panoramic images for the foreground and a series of panoramic images of the Milky Way arch using a star tracker. If you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend you watch that before watching this video. The link is in the description down below. So in this video, we're gonna go through the raw images we're going to stitch all those images together into two panels, one for the foreground, one for the Milky Way, and then we're gonna blend the two images together in Photoshop to create a single image. What we're not gonna be going through in this video is all the steps in post-processing the final image that we'll get here into a finished Milky Way image. There's a lot of steps, there's a lot of information out there on uh, YouTube, on articles, all over the place. A lot of people have tutorials on it, so I highly recommend looking at those for doing the final processing. So let's get started. We're going to start in, in uh, Capture One, which is where I do all my raw processing. I use Capture One largely because it works really well with Fujifilm files, which is what I use. So let's go ahead and we'll get started in Capture One. So here we are, we're in Capture One. These are the images of the foreground panoramic that I shot. And uh, I went through and did some basic raw editing. Now one thing that's very important when you do a panoramic image is that you sync or copy all of the edits from the one image to all of the others. So all of the images have the exact same edits in them. That way they'll blend together properly. Next step is we need to look at exporting all these. So the easiest is select them all. We'll go export. We're going to copy these to a folder called ground and we're going to export them. We're going to export them all as TIFF files, 16-bit and uncompressed. And then we'll hit export. Now I've already gone through and exported all these so I don't need to do that. All right, so now let's look at the Milky Way images. So I did a six shot panel there, and for each shot I took two images, one without a filter, one with a filter. The filter that I used is the Case Star Glow Allen Wallace Special Edition filter. This works really nice, and uh, it makes the bright stars really, really bright, and the dark stars kind of dimmer back, so it really accentuates the bright stars. It's a great filter, a little too strong for my, my taste, but we blend them together and it looks really nice. Okay, so here are the images and let's uh, start with the uh, no filter images. So what you can see, the Star Tracker gave us a very nice image. This is a two minute and 40 second exposure at ISO 1000 and it gives a really nice, lots of stars, very good clear detail on the stars. But because the star tracker is moving the camera, keeping it in sync with the stars, the ground is very fuzzy. That is why we need to have a foreground shot and a star shot when you use the uh, star tracker. So let's take a look at this. First off, I did some basic raw edits on this image, on these images. And once again, I did the same thing. I copied them to all of the images that I of this series. Now let's look at the filtered images and we'll go back to that same image. So this is the filtered image and you can see the stars are much brighter. It's got kind of an ethereal look to the Milky Way. Uh, it gives a nice nice look but once again when you do a 2 minute and 40 second exposure it's almost too intense. You can also see the ground is rather fuzzy. I synced these to be the exact same as with the, uh, the no filter version. So now we just need to go and export all of these. So what we're going to do, I'm actually going to turn that off and we're going to select all of the filtered images. So those are the yellow ones. Select all of those. Export them as TIFF files into a file called, in a folder called filter. And once again, I've already done that, so we don't need to go through through all that. But once, but these do need to be TIFF, 16-bit, uncompressed. Next, 
we're going to go and we're going to select all of the filtered images and we're going to export all of those. We will export those once again the same way, but I'm going to put those in a folder called No Filter and TIFF 16 bit uncompressed. Once again, I've already exported these, so I'm going to go ahead and hit. It uh, cancels since I've already done that once. And that takes care of the raw files and we now have them all as TIFF files that we can then stitch together as a panel. Okay, so now we have the raw files edited. We've exported them as TIFF files. Now we need to stitch together the pano images. So the program that I'm going to be using is called PTGUI. This is a version it started out as uh, was originally created as pt or panorama tools by a, uh, a university professor in germany and specifically for stitching panels together ptgui is a software that was created using the uh, panorama tools engine to and they put a graphical user interface in front of it so that it's fairly easy to use works really nice. All it does is panos. It doesn't do anything else. It just does panoramic images and it really works well for stitching panos together, especially when they're complicated panos like a star image panos where there aren't a lot of landmarks to blend together. So let's go ahead and go into PTGUI and blend these images. Okay, so we're here in PTGUI. And the first thing we need to do is load the images. So we can either click this button and load the images or we can drag and drop the images into there. So we're going to do the easy way, which is drop and drag the images. I have them in my ground folder here. I'm going to open that up, drag them up, and I'm going to drop them in there. And as you can see, it loaded all the images. And now it recognized that the lens was a 23 millimeter rectilinear lens and that I have a, the camera has a 0.8 crop factor. That's because this is a, uh, I used a uh, medium format camera and it has a 0.8 crop factor. So next step is to, we need to set up the panoramic images and click the align images button right here. Okay, so PTGUI has gone through and aligned all of our images here. One of the things with PTGUI is you have all different kinds of types of blending modes that you can uh, blend the images together, or stitching modes, I should say. You can go rectilinear, equatorial, uh, all different kinds. So we're going to stick with the, with the cylindrical here. This is a pretty basic image. You can also see there are red lines here. This is where the image was stitched together. These are the stitching lines for each of the images. So you can see how much of each image was used on the uh, panoramic image. The next step is fairly easy. We just need to close the uh, panorama editor and then we're gonna click create panorama. Okay, so this is where we actually create and export the panoramic image. Now this next step is kind of important because you need to make sure that you export this correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to select TIFF and we're going to pick the settings and we want to go to 16-bit and no compression. This gives us our best file format. We're going to hit OK. Next, we're going to go to Output File here and we're going to click Browse and we're going to put this in the main directory that I have and I'm just going to call this Ground Pano and we want to save this as a TIFF. Now one thing to realize is when you click save in this window, it does not save the pano. It just saves the location that you want to save the, the panoramic file to. So we'll click save. And then to actually save the panoramic file, we're going to click stitch the panorama or create panorama and then it will go and stitch the panoramic file and create a file for it. Okay, so now we're going to close this since the file is all stitched. Just hit close. I don't need to save this, this file, this uh, uh, work setup. Okay, now that we've got the foreground stitched together, we need to get the, uh, the star images ready to go. 
So to start with, being we have a filtered and a non-filtered image, we need to blend those together. So we're gonna do that in Photoshop. Okay, so we're here in Photoshop and I've got both the fil non-filtered and the filtered image in the stack. And what we're gonna do is look at both of these. So this is the non-filtered version and this is the filtered. So you can see how much of an effect that filter has on the image. And it does some cool stuff, like makes these stars really, really sharp, or really, really bright, but it's a little too much. I kind of like this, but I like having those stars a little brighter. So what we're gonna do is blend those together. So we go to the filter, and what I like to do to do this is I like to use soft light, although you could use any blend mode you wanted to, it made sense for you. Soft light, and then with soft light, I like to use the fill to reduce the, uh, how much it affects it. So I'm gonna drop that down to about 35%. That looks pretty good. So we go and we turn that on and off. You can see, especially like these stars here, they start to glow. They get a bit of a glow behind them. It's not too, too much of a high effect, but it does give them some glow. Then I went through, this image has some, uh, down in this area here, it has some, uh, airplane tracks, so I just went and did a little cleanup in that. Now this, we're gonna need to do a save as TIFF file, and I'm gonna put that into my stars, and I put that into a TIFF file. And I've already saved all of these, so I'm not gonna go through all that. Now one thing about this is you have to do the exact same blending on every single one of your panoramic images for the stars. So I have six images, so I had to go through and do it six times on each of those stars files. So we're back here in PTGUI, and we're gonna stitch the stars together. So once again, we're gonna go into the stars file folder this time. I'm gonna pick my TIFF folder, and I have all my TIFF files here together, and I'm just gonna select them all, we're gonna drag them up, and drop them into PTGUI. And it's brought them all in and they yeah, look pretty good. Now, we're gonna go ahead and hit Align Images. Okay, so it's aligned the images and it doesn't look quite right. It's actually kind of, uh, kind of looks kind of wonky. This is a problem that I've seen with uh, PTGUI when it blends really complicated images such as stars. It, uh, they, they can come in kind of funny. But we can fix this and there's, an, there's a fairly simple workaround. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna close this and you can see up here, all these images are upside down. So we're just gonna re-rotate that. That's this button and we're gonna hit it twice. And that rotates them around to the way they're supposed to be. Now, you also notice that the Align Images button is gone. So what we need to do is go to the Panoramic Editor, and that's this button right here. Hit that button, and all of a sudden, we have our pano there, and it's the right way. It's still not quite right, because it's not centered up, but we can work on that. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna gently drag this over. We're gonna click in it and drag it over till it's about in the middle. Okay, so that's been positioned where we want it. Now, one thing we need to look at is we have the Milky Way arch here, and we have these mountains down along in here. Problem is, these are gonna get kind of in our way when we blend the two images together. So the way to fix that, to deal with that, is to warp it. So if we click here in about the middle, I can stretch this down a little. That gets all of those mountains out of the way and make the blending of the two images much easier. And we're gonna go ahead and hit close on this. Now we can go and create pano. Go through the same process as we did before. We're gonna select that to TIFF. We're gonna set the settings to 16 bit and none and hit okay. We're gonna to go to Browse. We're going to go to my main star panel folder. And we're gonna hit Save. And we're gonna hit Create Pano. And we'll go ahead and start stitching the pano together. 
Okay, so now we have the uh, star panel stitched together. Okay, so let's review where we are. We've gone through, we've done the raw edits in Capture One. We exported those as TIFFs. We brought them into PTGUI and stitched together the foreground. We went in Photoshop and we blended the filtered and non-filtered versions of the star images together and uh, then exported those as TIFFs, brought those into PTGUI and blended all, and stitched all those together into uh, a star panoramic image. So now we just need to go and blend the two, Im two panoramic images together and we'll do that in Photoshop. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and the first step we need to do is open up both the images. So we're gonna go and I like to select both images and then open them in Photoshop. Okay, so both the files have been opened up in Photoshop. So we have the ground, foreground panoramic and we have the star panoramic image. I use a Mac, so when I say Command, that well, on a, if you're using a PC, that would be Control. And if I say Option on a PC, that would be Alt. Okay, so we're gonna bring this image the uh, foreground image into the star image. So I'm gonna begin by going Command or Control A, which selects everything, Command or Control C, which copies it, and then Command or Control W, which closes that file, because I don't need it open anymore. Then we're gonna go Command or Control V, and that pastes that into the star image. It's a separate layer. Now, Obviously, it doesn't look so good. So the first step we're gonna do, we're gonna turn off the star layer. So we just have the, uh, the uh, ground layer, foreground layer on, and we're going to select sky. Now this may not work for all images. I don't have any big trees or anything in the way, so selecting sky, it's fairly clean, and it works fairly well for this image. We've got the sky selected, now we just need to invert that selection. Then we're gonna hit the mask button to create a mask. And it does a reasonably good job, it takes the sky out on there. But we can make this better. If you look inside, it's kind of faded looking. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to select the mask in the layers path, and then we're gonna to go to channels. I'm going to duplicate this layer mask just in case I make a mistake and need to start over. Okay, so here's our layer mask. Now let's uh, zoom in here a little bit. And we're gonna scroll over. To, uh, so let's look over here, kind of by Bell Rock area. Okay, so what you can see is it's kind of, it's not a solid, hard black and white mask. It's kind of got some fading of gray and on both sides. So what we need to do is correct that. Now the way to do that is to, to clip the mask with the curves. So we're gonna do it Command or Control M, we'll bring up the curves for the mask, and we're going to drag the whites over so we get a nice good white there. And we're going to drag the blacks over till we get a nice good solid edge on our mask. So now we have a nice solid white and black, very nice distinctive mask. Don't worry about these, we're gonna go take care of that here in just a moment. So now let's go and we'll scroll back over. Looks like we have a little bit here that isn't quite perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the mat the curves back up. We'll just do the same thing a little bit. Pull that up a little till we get the uh, another till we get that edge nice and sharp. And we'll just scroll back over. Make sure we got a nice, good, clean edge all the way around. See some spots. We'll clean those up in a moment, and everything looks good. So. What we're gonna do to clean up the spots is we're gonna select L for lasso, or we can select the lasso tool there. And we're just gonna go and lasso select all these spots here real quick and hit Option or Alt 
delete and that floods that area, that selection with the foreground color, which is white. Okay, so we have the nice looking uh, mask. And remember, with Photoshop, white reveals, black conceals, which is exactly what we want. And that's what this mask is doing. So we're gonna bring this mask into the next thing. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna make a selection of that mask, hitting the selection button. Then we're gonna reload the RGB, turn that mask off. We'll go to the layers, select that mask, the original mask we had, and we're gonna delete that one. And then we're gonna click the mask button down here again using that selection, and we're going to create a new mask. And that's a lot sharper image for that. And when we turn on the stars, it actually looks pretty good. Okay, so now we have the stars and we need to get them kind of aligned. They aren't really where they should be, where the Milky Way should be. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit Command or Control T. We're gonna select the stars layer and we're gonna hit Command or Control T for transform. And we're gonna move that over some to kind of where we want it, which is probably right in about here. And that looks pretty good. Now we have a slight problem right in this area here. You can see there's a this hill piece here, which is actually that from the star layer is up there. So we're going to have to fix that. Now the way to easy way to fix that is to rotate this pan out image a little bit in the transform. So if we go over to the side piece here, we can rotate down a little bit and we can kind of conceal that. And now we have the panoramic image where we want it. We may want to adjust a little bit, but it looks pretty good where it's at. I'm kind of happy with that. So now we can just go ahead and hit check and it will commit that transform. Okay, so now we have the two images, two panoramic images blended together and they look pretty good. Let's take a look at something here. Let's go in and take a close look at this. So if we look at this image, you can see this is a fairly hard edge. It doesn't look natural. So what we need to do is we're going to go and I'm going to Select the mask again, and I'm going to hit Option or Alt on that, and that will make the mask visible. So what we want to do is I'm going to go full size here again, and I'm going to select the mat, the that selection. So if I hit Command or Control and select the mask, it will select that. And now if I go and I hit Select, First off, I want to invert this mask. So it's just the black because I want to expand the black area. Then I'm going to hit select and I'm going to go modify. And we're going to expand this by two pixels. And that will increase the size of the mask area by two pixels. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to hit command or control delete. And that's going to flood that area with black. Then I'm going to deselect that and that mask. I'm going to go and I'm going to feather that mask by two pixels. Now if I go back to here and I go back in and I go back over to that same area, we have a much more natural softer edge because we brought back the anti-aliasing that we had in the, uh, in the edge of that mask. So that makes for a nice softer edge for the whole image. Because I shot this with a GFX 100S camera, that's a 102 megapixel camera, and this is, we're looking at basically 10 images of that. It's a very, very large file. So I wanna rough crop this down to make it more easy to work on. So what we'll do is we're gonna just bring up the crop tool and we're going to bring this in a little bit to about where we want it, which will be somewhere around in here. And bring this over to right in about here. We'll bring the 
bottom up a little bit and the top down. Now this is just what I would call a rough crop. It's not the final crop. You'll probably come up with a better crop when you go through and you know, once you get done processing it, you can crop it to exactly the way you want it. And we'll go ahead and check. And now you can see this is the image that we came up with. And it's a nice image of the two panoramic images blended together. All right, so let's uh, review what we did. We went and took a series of panoramic images up in Sedona. We had a series for the foreground and we had a series for the Milky Way. In the Milky Way series, we took two image for images. For each panel of the pano, we did a shot with a filter, the Case Star Glow Alan Wallace Special Edition filter, and without a filter. And then we uh, went, brought those all back here. In the computer, we went and did raw edits on all these images and exported them as TIFF files. We then blended the uh, filtered and non-filtered images together so that they looked the way we wanted them to in Photoshop and saved those as TIFF files. We then went and took the foreground images into PTGY and stitched a pano together. We then did the same thing with the star images, stitched those together in PTGY. Then we put those, brought both those panos into Photoshop and blended them together into one, pan, into one image. They can now be processed as a standard Milky Way image. Hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it or leave a comment. And if you'd like, please subscribe. Thank you very much and I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. If you would like to see more videos like this, please subscribe.